There she is. Hi, Hello again. again. Hello again. What are you going to do with this statue now? Well, I mean, this one I just got to tuck in so it has sweet dreams, you know. This is my little baby. And, and <laughs> it's very heavy. It is very heavy. It's about as heavy as a baby. Yes, <laughs> I know. Do you have a spot for all of these awards? Though? You know, right now, because I'm on the road, there's a little nook carved out. And it's, yeah. you know, so I can just placed with photos and sweet letters and cards and everything it's uh it's nice to it's nice to wake up and feel the love and the reminders of it but yeah it's just gonna be in that little nook in the hotel room for the time being and then uh we'll see we'll see where he he she they he, go she, home they, yep exactly. we'll see where they go <laughs> this gown is spectacular i said it earlier I, I the color red yes i know means something mm -hmm. tell us to you what it means thank you and I probably should have said it more explicitly in my speech, but the visibility aspect of the red and the story that we told with Killers of the Flower Moon, it's to, it's to raise visibility, to raise that power, that medicine that um, red holds for our missing and murdered indigenous relatives. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon very much touches on a very heinous chapter of that history, but that's been, you know, that's our history now. It's our, it's our present day. It's been our history since 1492, you know, 1491, whichever year that was. <laughs> um, so I think one of the reasons and one of the ways that we've survived as a people is because we pass our stories forward. We keep our stories that tell us who we are as human beings, how to navigate this world that a lot of people should, you know, should take heed of. Um, our knowledges have kept us around through unbelievable things. You know, in some places, 95% of the native population is eradicated, but we're still here. And we still have a sense of who we are because we value stories. We value storytellers. And um, being a professional storyteller when we are continuing to live through this epidemic of missing, murdered, indigenous relatives, it's, it's why I wear red. I want to take notes every time I hear you speak. <laughs> Honestly, I learned something spectacular from you. Plus, your voice is so soothing. <laughs> Thank you. I've been you told that. that. Yes. Yep, yep. It's um, it's a gift from, I think, both sides of my family. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just, thank you. I appreciate that. So, a year ago, mm -hmm. what were you doing? Oh, what was it? Because it's been a lot... Fabulous year since the release of this film, but where were you like a year ago, a year and a half ago? A year ago, I was on set in Vancouver, B.C., doing what every actor is so excited to get back to with the season winding down is to go back and tell more stories. Um, that piece definitely I have coming out in April. It's called Under the Bridge. It's going to be on Hulu, uh, co-starring Riley Keough and, a, and Archie Punjabi and just a slew of unbelievably talented actors. Um, a lot of new discoveries in the kids. It's a really, it's also a story that is, um, it's a very difficult one, but it's very important to, to tell, to have, to discuss, and that one will be out soon. Okay. Yeah. What do you do for fun? Because you're a very serious gal. I want to know. Uh, it's funny because I can hear all my friends on the other side watching this being like, serious, really? <laughs> I'm known for being kind of goofy. Um, Are you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, there's a reason we've got this and there's a reason we've got this. Right. And I tend to live my life over here a little bit more. So, I mean, I just have fun. I find fun in whatever I'm doing, you know, and a lot of it is... Spending time with other people, creating fun things. Um, yeah, I really enjoy spending time with animals, kids. Right. Have you heard from Leo this evening yet? I don't have my phone on me. I imagine I have a text waiting for me. There's been one every other time. Right. <laughs> now, you've met a lot of friends along the way, mm -hmm. and people outside of even this film. What's that like to you? Because I know, like, you and Emma Stone are very close now. Right. Oh, she's been the, she's the best. Like, just being goofy through texts, I can't remember if it was her or me, but just, like, I mean, of course, you, as a lot of people point out, we're both stones. Right. So just pointed out, yay, infinity stones to infinity and beyond, you know, just being goofy with whatever. And then the next day I have an infinity stones ring show up from her, and she's got the matching one. So feeling that level of support and just, it, um, she's been through this ringer more than a few times. You know, and uh, it's been really nice to just connect with somebody who takes it in stride exactly, you know, 
feels exactly the things you're feeling with it. Um, so she's given you good advice along the way. Yeah, and just commiseration and right. also somebody to celebrate and cheer on. And likewise, it's just right. all the actresses in the categories that we've been in the same class as in the same room with, talking process, talking all of it. It's been, it's been a real gift. Now countdown to the Oscars. How yeah. are you going to spend the next few weeks? Oh. Gown fitting, we know that. <laughs> uh, a bit, a bit. Uh, I'm going to make a little bit of a lap to see some friends that I haven't seen in quite a bit. Because oh. as every everybody in this um, in this race will tell you, and as every actor knows, you know, it's like, sorry, I can't, I'm in rehearsal. It kind of makes you a chronically bad friend. Right. I think Greta Lee's the one who said that one. But uh, yeah, gonna go catch up with some friends, go to, go to a wedding, go to some dinners, okay. and then back here. And who are you gonna bring as your date to the Oscars? I'm bringing my mom and my dad. Nice. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> well, we'll